Jesus. Jesus says the world will end in laughter because it was a place of sorrow. Jesus is telling us the only problem was that we took seriously the tiny mad idea of ego, of separation. We forgot to laugh at the funniest joke ever. And Jesus even used the word joke in, in A Course in Miracles. He says, it is a joke to think that time can come to circumvent eternity. Like uh, Joel Goldsmith used to call it a parenthesis in eternity. That's, that's the joke. Eternity is so vast when you try to put little parentheses on it that you, you, you make up a joke of a world. <laughs> and yet, if you believe in those parentheses, and if you believe in that tiny little mad idea, then the consequences you perceive seem to be real to the perceiver because the perceiver believes in them. You see, they're not real because they have no eternal nature to them. God didn't create them, so they have no eternal reality, but Jesus does say in the Course, what you believe you make true for you. So it's like, kind of like Pygmalion. Anybody heard of Pygmalion, you know, where you, where you believe something and it turns into a self-fulfilling prophecy? Well, the ego is that tiny self. So if you believe in the ego, then the world becomes your self-fulfilling prophecy. If you believe in the ego, you could say you're at war with yourself because Christ is not an ego. So everyone who's concerned about the war in Ukraine, as I said last week, needs to come bring it back to the mind and say, wait a minute, I've got an internal war going on. I believe in two thought systems that don't meet. I have a split mind and I believe in both love and fear and they don't go together. And light and dark don't go together. So the Bible told us perfect love cast out fear. That's what we're going for. So really, A Course in Miracles is just a practical way to achieve and experience perfect love cast out fear. That one little phrase from the Bible you could say is, is very important. Perfect love cast out fear. And Jesus says in the Course, if there is fear, then you were not experiencing that perfect love. You didn't know the, your true identity, and therefore it seemed like a struggle. The good news is Jesus says the war against yourself is almost over now. So, you know, instead of worrying about Ukraine, you should rejoice that the war against yourself is almost over now. That's, that's, that's good news. And, and you really will feel it with this movie because Jesus is going to use an international espionage movie, which when I looked it up, it, the two categories of this movie were crime and comedy. Only Jesus Christ can use a crime comedy movie to help you remember to laugh at the ego. Only Jesus can pull in and turn espionage Cold War, struggles around world, world war, turn that scenario into a comedy. Only Jesus, Holy Spirit can pull that off. That's why, you know, probably if people always say, what's your top 10 movies for Awakening? Wow, what, if it's a comedy, it, it, that's strong. It, it jumps into the top 10 of all time movies. We're gonna watch one of those top 10 classic movies today. Because when it's a comedy, it zooms past the 20s and it zooms into the top 10 because we need to laugh. We need to really laugh at this. We, we have, have got to stop taking everything so seriously. We made it up, all right. We invented it, all right. Now we can let it go. If we invented it, we can uninvent it. <laughs> if we seem to do it, we can undo it. <laughs> you know, there's not... It, why would the God of eternity leave us stuck in, in an error when the error is easily corrected? In fact, Jesus tells us the error has already been corrected. Now you just have to accept the correction. This is not a future event. This thing is, has been corrected and it's over and gone, but now we have to accept the correction. Now, 
I'm going to read you a, a couple of miracle principles. Last night, uh, Kirsten referred to uh, the miracle principle, you can heal the sick and raise the dead because you made sickness and death and can abolish them both. But I'm going to jump in and I'm just going to um, talk, first of all, about miracle principle number 11. And I think this, this principle is one of the most practical. When you first read it, when I first read it, I just went, what? What are you talking about? I, I couldn't even understand what this meant at the beginning. But now I have to say 36 years later, this one is dear to my heart because this one shows you the quick, the quick shot back to heaven. This, this miracle principle is, is key. It's actually key. If you can really embrace it, you're going to find your life get happier in a hurry. And you're going to find you're going to be laughing a lot more if you can embrace this principle. So here we go. Miracle principle number 11. The miracle abolishes the need for lower order concerns. Since it is an out of pattern time interval, the ordinary considerations of time and space do not apply. When you perform a miracle, I will arrange both time and space to adjust to it. You know, you can understand when I first read that, I was like, what? What are you talking about? And, and first of all, the very first sentence is, is shocking to the ego. The miracle abolish, abolishes the need for lower order concerns. What is he talking about? Lower order concerns. Concerns around money. Concerns around the body. Concerns around food concerns around shelter and clothing, concerns around interpersonal relationships. Uh, we had a beautiful session last night and Dana and then uh, uh, David and Nani were talking about the heartbreak of children. You know, it was all around a birthday and, and there was heartbreak there. And those are lower order concerns to Jesus. Jesus is saying, I, if you come into the miracle, you'll see that those are really something I can handle quite easily. But if your mind gets distracted in them, it, it hurts. It hurts. So just like we had two birthdays talked about last night, and, and, uh, and, and also we had a birthday down, down in Peru, uh, we basically... This movie is centers on a birthday. So Jesus is using a birthday movie to directly answer the heartbreak last night around the birthdays. He's so, he's so relevant. You know, you see how he comes in the next day, like, oh, my beloved were concerned and sad around birthdays. I'm going to use a birthday movie to help them laugh. You see how practical Jesus is. So when he says, the miracle abolishes the need for lower, low order concerns. He's basically saying, if you will allow your mind to, to perform miracles, if you'll let me perform miracles through your mind, I'll handle everything else. This is what he said in the Bible 2000 years ago. He said, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and all else will be added unto you. This is what he says in the Course, when he, he promises, he says, once you accept the Holy Spirit function as the one function you would fulfill, there will be nothing else the Holy Spirit will not arrange for you. He says, without your effort, the Holy Spirit will go before you, making straight your path and leaving in your way no stones to trip on and no obstacles to bar your way. Nothing you need will be denied you. Not one seeming difficulty, but will melt away before you reach it. That's what he's talking about in principle number 11. He's saying, if you give me your mind and your heart for miracles, 
your problems in this world are significantly done, they're over, because it takes a lot of past learning, a lot of work, a lot of worry, a lot of, of education to try to fix problems that are unreal. And he's saying, if you'll let me perform miracles for, through you, you will see that you have no problems. You will quickly see that you have no problems. So we have a hundred and some people here on the workshop. We've got our mystery school going on, all our mystery school participants, um, 11 are, are in Mexico, and we have a, a global audience. And we're here really to say yes to Jesus, to be used as miracle workers. Now, the second um, one I'd like to share is, is just is miracle principle number 15. He says the level adjustment power of the miracle induces the right perception for healing. I'll say that sentence again. The level adjustment power of the miracle induces the right perception for healing. Until this has occurred, healing cannot be understood. Forgiveness is an empty gesture unless it entails correction. Without this, it is essentially judgmental rather than healing. So what does he mean by the level adjustment power of the miracle? Well, as I've said many times over these 36 years, that only the mind is causative. What does that mean? It means the mind is very powerful, but the mind is the source from which causation comes. Ultimately, God is the, is the cause and Christ is the effect of the creator, that God created Christ as a perfect idea, not a man or a woman, but Jesus was a symbol of that Christ. But Christ, God created Christ, a perfect idea in the mind of God. So God is the cause and Christ is the effect. And we're talking about this is all within the mind of God and the mind of Christ. So the mind is the only creator. Uh, the, body, the body cannot create. I know in this world, people call it procreation, where you say, well, bodies can have children. And people say, well, bodies can get sick. And then people say, well, bodies can cause other people to get sick, or even kill other bodies, or even kill a, a, a body that they believe in themselves, suicide. But Jesus says these are two errors in the mind. And the two errors in the mind are that the, the, the mind can miscreate in the body or that the body can miscreate in the mind. The first one you pretty much understand, the idea that my mind can give my body cancer is, is an error because the mind cannot miscreate in the body. And what's an example of, of the body miscreating in the mind is when you, let's say you have a migraine headache and you say, my head is killing me. <laughs> That's an example of the belief that the body can miscreate in the mind. Basically, you're saying, my head is throbbing and it's killing my mind, <laughs> you know, because Jesus tells us you're a mind. You have to start to realize you are mind, holy mind, and purely mind. You've never been a body. You've never been in a body. <laughs> that's, a, that's a misperception. That's just a, a misperception of time to believe that your identity is, is either a body or in a body. So those are two uh, very important principles to keep in mind as we watch today's movie. Today's movie stars Bill Murray. It's called The Man Who Knew Too Little. It is a comedy. But before I leave these uh, miracle principles behind, I know I, I know I just read number 11, The Miracle Abolishes the Need for Lower Order Concerns. And I know a lot of you are saying, hmm, sentimentally, maybe sentimentally I can agree with Jesus, but not, that's been, not been my experience in time and space, not at all. 
it seems like uh, I've been struggling to survive as a body for many years. So what he's saying is the miracle abolishes the need for lower order concerns. You know, you may think, wow, that, that sounds good. Uh, it's like Susanna from Sweden was saying, I want to know the power of their mind. That sounds really good, but I want to know that as an actual experience. I don't want to have that as a theory. I want to know it as an actual experience. I want the actual direct experience of the power of my mind. So as usual, I was praying this morning and I was praying to Jesus, can you please give an example through me so people can relate to it so that when they go into this movie, they have a, they have a, an example from the parable of David that really is, a, is, is so powerful of an example, so powerful of a, of a metaphor, a demonstration that, that they, they start to smile and they start to open to this experience in this movie. Because otherwise the mind can say, oh, it's a comedy movie, but what does that have to do with me? <laughs> you see, you have to, you want to have the experience of this. So I prayed to Jesus and I said, is there anything that I can share from the parable of David that would give an example of, um, of you and the Holy Spirit rearranging time and space for the miracle? Because Lord knows I've been open and willing to be used for miracle working my whole life, but especially these last 36 years. And, and I prayed and I thought of, of a miracle that I experienced um, a number of years ago. And, and you had uh, Kirsten and Jason and Lisa on last night, and it really involves David and Lisa. So this is, uh, this is a, a David and Lisa parable, just like the TV show I Love Lucy was Lucy and Desi. This was, this was Lisa and David uh, getting swept away uh, totally hilariously by Jesus in the miracle. And the way it starts is I remember um, I hadn't seen Lisa for a while. She was, uh, she was up in Pennsylvania where she had her business, uh, nursing staffing business, and in Mount Joy. This is this is where this is the name of the town where Lisa had her business, Mount Joy. She was the CEO of a, of a business in Mount Joy, and I hadn't seen her for a while. And Jesus had me call her up and and say, Lisa, I feel like we're supposed to go on a miracle adventure. And um, she said, Oh yeah, okay, I'm I'm open. It's pretty intense. She was going through a huge intensity at the time because um, her best friend in the whole world was suing her. <laughs> and so, it, you know, that just shows how, how intense it can get. Her best friend, Bonnie, was suing her. And you may say, why would your best friend sue you? Well, they're both their sons, Bonnie's son and Lisa's son were in a car crash and I think Polly was at the wheel and Bonnie's son was, was, was really injured extremely badly as the world would call it. And so here's her best friend saying, oh, by the way, there's a lawsuit. I'm, <laughs> I'm suing you <laughs> for what your son did to my son. I know this is extreme. This is how intense it gets when one best friend sues another best friend because their son Sons were in a crash together. So I remember it was a very intense time for Lisa. And I, I said, you know, well, why don't we just join in the miracle? And she said, yeah, I'm trying every day to, to follow Jesus here, but it's, it's, it's hard. It's, it's really devastating. And I said, well, let's take a trip. Let's just take an, a little bit of an adventure trip together. Let's just take a trip. And then that'll take your mind off of it. Let's get into the miracles. We're here to spread the joy. We're here to bring joy to people, to be happy. And she's like, yeah, yeah, I could, I could do that. So I said, well, I'll arrange the trip. And um, you're in Pennsylvania, so you just have to drive down to Baltimore, Maryland, and I'll, fl I'll fly and I'll meet you at Baltimore, Maryland, and we'll fly from Baltimore and let I'll arrange a trip. 
So I, I arranged a trip. You know, when you sometimes you arrange a vacation trip, you arrange the flight, you arrange the, the car, the rental car, you arrange the, the hotel. And so I arranged like maybe like a, a four or five day trip from Baltimore, Maryland to Phoenix, Arizona, just as a little adventure. Let's just go on an adventure together, the two of us. I'll, I'll arrange the, the flight. I'll tell you which airport. Just meet me there. We'll hop on the plane. We'll go for four or five days and we'll have a miracle adventure. I've, I'm used to doing these kind of things too. This was not an outer pattern for me. <laughs> so I hear somebody's hurting. I say, let's go on an adventure together and let's be happy together and, and, and come back into the joy. So anyway, my feeling was, I thought I'm just going to meet her in the Baltimore airport and get there early enough to so we can have a meal together, share a nice miracle meal, catch our flight to Phoenix, Arizona, and enjoy a four or five day trip. So this is what I mean by Jesus says, the miracle abolishes the need for lower order concerns. So this is what happens. I get to the Baltimore airport and and then Lisa, she's there, she's there. And I said, well, before we go have our meal, why don't we check in, check our luggage in and, you know, get our boarding passes and everything. She's like, great, great. I said, I, I, all I really want is just to have a nice meal with you and enjoy our flight tonight. Cause it was, it was evening time, it was dark. So we both went up to the, to the counter, the ticket counter and we went to check in, we got our passports and identification out and everything like this. And the staff at the ticket counter, they looked at us like their faces turned white. And we said, what's, what's the problem? What's going on? And they said, oh, we have terrible news for you. I said, what? They said, the, the crew, the, the flight attendants and the, the pilots, uh, they just, they didn't make it. They didn't show up. So we, we have a plane, but we have no one to fly you. And I said, but it, I, I just got here. I saw nothing in my phone or my watch. And now you're saying it's like a last minute cancellation. Yeah, the whole thing has been canceled at the last minute because the, the crew didn't show up. Now, I've flown a lot of flights in my life, but I've never got to the airport and to the ticket counter and had a cancellation <laughs> right at the ticket counter. And they both, they felt really bad. And Lisa and I just looked at each other. But I was in the miracle. I thought, oh, Jesus is playing around again. Here he goes, arranging time and space. And now he's canceled, he's canceled my miracle uh, adventure here. But I, I have a feeling he's just having some fun. So I looked at Lisa and she just was blank. And I was blank. And I just like, so we looked at the, the, the ticket people and they were like, so we all stood there just staring at each other <laughs> because none of us knew what was happening. So this is not new for me. <laughs> I was like, I was really clueless, but so was everyone else. Lisa was clueless and so were the ticket people. So they looked at me and they just were like, uh, finally they said, uh, what do you want to do? They asked me, <laughs> they didn't tell me. They asked me, what do you want to do? And I just said, well, I, I plan to uh, come here, meet my friend Lisa, and uh, have, a, have a nice dinner with her and fly to, to Phoenix tonight. <laughs> they asked me, what do you want to do? I said, that's, that's what I wanted to do. I, I bought a ticket. I, and I was ready to go have dinner. I, I'm, and Lisa said, I'm hungry. <laughs> so I said, there you go. You know, she's hungry too. So they looked at us and they said, oh, well, we'll give you vouchers. They gave us vouchers for a meal, not just $5 vouchers. They gave us like $20 each vouchers <laughs> to buy a meal. So we got like $40 worth of vouchers. And I said, oh, that's good. That's nice. We can have a nice meal. I said, what about the ticket? They said, well, there's no way our airline is flying to Phoenix tonight. What do you want? And, and we both looked at each other and I said, I, I'd still like to go to Arizona. And Lisa's like, yeah, me too. So they said, okay. And they got somebody from their airlines with a credit card. And they said, we'll walk you down to another airlines 
and we'll, with a credit card, buy you a ticket to Arizona on another airline. And I'm like, you will? Wow, that, that's a first. <laughs> I've never seen that. This is like This is how Jesus does his uh, stuff. Only Jesus arranges time and space. You, you know this is not human. So anyway, we, we walked down and, and I said, well, we've got plenty of time. Uh, maybe we'll just see if they reschedule another flight for us and we have time to use our vouchers and have dinner and fly to Arizona. So he walked us down to the other airline and then he told the people, oh, we're so sorry, our flight crew didn't show up and these people want to go to Arizona. So we want to buy a ticket on your plane to go to Arizona. And they said, what, what city? And we said, well, we were going to Phoenix. They said, we don't have a flight to Phoenix. We have a flight to Tucson. They said, okay, that's Arizona, right? That's Arizona. See, we didn't, we were not invested even in the city, even though I'd already booked a car and a hotel in Phoenix. I thought, oh, well, Jesus is just playing with us. We're just going to have some fun with this. So, so they booked us a flight from Baltimore to Tucson. And we went, we had a beautiful meal. We used our vouchers. We went to go to the, uh, we went to go to the new boarding gate with the, on the new airline to go to Tucson. And we got to the boarding gate. We're all sitting around. And then on the PA system comes, ladies and gentlemen, we're very sorry, but the flight to Tucson has been canceled because the plane is broke. And that's what they said on, on the, the speakers, the plane is broke. Well, Lisa and I burst into laughter and so did all the other passengers. The other passengers were like, did you hear what they just said on the PA? The plane is broke. People started texting their wives and husbands. The plane is broke. I got all the way. I'm, I'm in the waiting room to board the plane and they're telling us the plane is broke. And I was like, man, Jesus is just having so much fun that all we can do is laugh. So we just laughed hilariously for the next 10 minutes that the plane was broke. That's what they told us. The plane was broke. That's all that they told us was the plane was broke. And then after 10 minutes, they said, please move down to gate such and such. We are, we are going to use another plane to fly you to Tucson. We said, okay. So all of us laughed all the way down to the next gate. We People we never met, we were laughing. We were still laughing all the way down that the plane is broke. He said, that's the silliest thing I ever heard, you know, somebody telling you the plane is broke. That's So we go down and sure enough, there's another plane and we board. So we get on the plane. And then off we are, now we're traveling, we're flying for maybe over four hours from Baltimore to, uh, to Tucson. So we're just having a happy flight. We had a great meal together. We're laughing. We're still laughing in the plane. The people around us are laughing. The plane is broke. Can you believe that? Whoever said that? I, I never heard that before. So we fly. We land. We land in Tucson, and we're at the airport. And I go to the Avis car rental uh, place at the airport. And Lisa and I look, and we say, you know, we actually were planning to go to Phoenix, Arizona. So we have a reservation for a car on your company in Phoenix, but we're here in Tucson. So we need to change our reservation to Tucson car, this Avis car rental. But we didn't know it, but the guy at the car rental place was having a bad night. He was angry. He was so mad and we, he was shaking his head and he was throwing his arms around and we're trying to explain we have a reservation in Phoenix, but we're saying we have it here. It's the same company, but and he's like, damn company. I hate this damn company. I hate my job. He, he was just angry at, at Avis. He said, you know, Avis, the, the slogan for Avis is we try harder. And, and he said, that's not true. The slogan should be, I am harder. My heart is harder by working for this company. I hate this company. 
So clearly we were sent by Jesus to bring a miracle to this guy uh, at the car rental place in a city that we weren't even planning to go to. So we, we told him, no, it's not so bad. And we started laughing with him and joking with him. And before you know it, he was laughing. In only like a minute, he was laughing too. He went from rage into, he was laughing. He was still a little mad at the company, but he was laughing. He's, he said, what kind of car did you have book? And I said, oh, just an economy car. And he said, economy? I'm going to give you an upgrade. I'm, I'm damn mad at my company. I'm going to give you an upgrade. I said, well, you're going to give us a midsize? He said, no, no. I said, you're going to give us a like a luxury car? And he's like, no, I'm giving you the top of the line. I'm giving you a town car. I'm giving you the biggest, most luxurious car that this company has, even though you paid for economy. <laughs> I'm giving you a triple upgrade. So we were like, oh my God, we just got a free meal, a flight to Tucson, and now we're standing, sharing the miracle and getting a triple upgrade uh, at, the, at the Avis car rental. So then the guy smiles after he books us into this, this car. It, it basically, he took us out to the lot and the car that he had planned for us originally there was an empty, an empty lot there. He, he's out there in the car lot with us with the key and there's no car. And he's like, I am so damn mad at this company. Give me the, give me the best car. Give me the town car now. I want the town car out here for these people, you know. And so then we're out there with this guy and a limo pulls up. It's basically now we're in a limo. Uh, I mean, this is a big black limo. We're in a top class limo now. He says, there you go. I'm going to help load the load your luggage in there and everything. And then he said, where are you staying? And I said, well, you know, I had a, a hotel as part of a package down in uh, Phoenix. And, and he said, where, where are you staying now? Where are you going with this car? And I said, well, I'm going to have to search for a hotel. He said, oh, no, you're not. He said, I am going to, I'm going to get a voucher from this company for a hotel. You're going to get a, a free hotel from this company too. He was fired up. So he gives us, puts us in a town car, like a, a, a big, like Lincoln Continental thing. And we don't even know how to start it or drive it. I mean, there's so many buttons in there. I'm laughing when I get into it. I'm like, you know how to drive this, Lisa? She's like, I'll navigate. She said, I've got the voucher. He's given us a voucher for a hotel. So I thought, well, what does Jesus got planned now? So we drive about two miles and we pull up to this. It looks like a palace. It's just lit up into the night sky. It's like the biggest motel, the grandest, most fancy hotel. It's just totally lit up. And we pull up with this town car and the people see us. And it's, it's, it's by that time, it's like, I don't know, it's, it's late evening. So they, you have to buzz to get in because, you know, it's, it's past uh, business hours. So we buzz, the, the guy who runs the hotel comes and, and he opens the door. He says, it's very late. I said, yeah, we had a, a delay with the airport. So we go in there and we go into his office and he says, let me call it up for you. And I said, why? The guy gave me a voucher. And he said, oh, you got a voucher for a free room. I said, yeah, he gave me a voucher. So he said, okay, let me see. Oh, we're sorry that that we don't have any more of those rooms available. I said, well, what have you got? He said, we'll get you, don't worry, we'll get you suited here. So he goes and he goes searching for a room. He says, well, we're pretty well booked. All we have left is at the top of the hotel uh, with the balcony, it's the honeymoon suite. I'll, I'll have to book you into the honeymoon suite. And Lisa and I are like, You've got to be kidding. <laughs> You've just got to be kidding. And we told him all the miracles that had happened of the whole day. And he said, hey, you guys are hot. You guys are so hot. We should go to a casino. I can take you to a casino right now. I'm going with you. I want to put some money. Down. You guys are off in some kind of zone. Because we just told him all the miracles. He wanted to take us late at night, like at midnight or one to a casino that's opened all night to bet some money and have us throw the dice. 
we said, no, no. So we got up there and we went out to the balcony and the pool was lit. And we looked down and, and there's a beautiful swimming pool and it's all lit up, even though it was one o'clock in the morning. And uh, they were even willing to open, open the door and let us go in past business hours to go swimming. I tell you this parable because if you say yes to Jesus, you have no idea how powerful the mind is and that time and space can be reorganized just so you can be happy and share your joy. It's, it's like a fairy tale. It's very much like the fairy tales that we read all through our life. We thought, wow, wouldn't it be great if life was like a fairy tale? But actually, life has been like a fairy tale for me. It's, it's been for the last 36 years. It's been, that's a parable from the list of parables. And that was one that really stuck in my mind. I said, I can, I can share that one because, number one, we didn't have an agenda. Um, it was a miracle trip, so we weren't concerned really when the flight got canceled. We weren't concerned so much about the city we were flying to because we were just going to be sharing the joy wherever we went. So even though the city, Tucson, is a pretty good distance uh, away from um, Phoenix, we didn't really care. We weren't going to see people. We were going to just shine the light. And then the Avis car rental guy... And, and the hotel guy, it started us on a four to five day uh, trip, which ended, uh, I think we had that big town car. We drove over to New Mexico with it. And we were, we were in rural New Mexico having miracles at a little place on our last day of our trip. And then I said, I'll, I'll go out and warm the car up. It was a cold morning. We had to go all the way up to uh, Albuquerque to fly out of Albuquerque. And, and I put the luggage in this giant town car and it automatically locked after I started the car and put the luggage in it and left the car, it automatically locked. So I had to go back to Lisa and I say, it's four in the morning, but our car is locked. And we both walked out and we looked at the car and we burst into laughter, no kidding, for like five minutes. Like, this is the funniest trip even on the last day, Jesus is just playing with us every little step of the way. We are laughing so hard like we've never laughed before. I mean, how can you not laugh? It's four in the morning. You're going to catch a flight that's like two hours away, and, and your car locks up in the desert. <laughs> I found a coat hanger. <laughs> I was able to get, get in with a coat hanger. But... But we laughed for, five, no kidding, for five minutes. Lisa, the tears were coming down her face when she found out she couldn't get in the car in a cold morning in the desert. You know, she just was, we both were laughing so hard we couldn't stop from crying because it was so much out of our control. But this is the key thing. In the movie today I'm showing, Bill Murray is really clueless. He's really good at being clueless. <laughs> He's He plays... Wallace Ritchie, an American, who it's his birthday, and his brother from England, uh, James Ritchie, sends him some money for his birthday. And Wallace Ritchie, Wally is his nickname. Wally lives in Des Moines, Iowa, and he works at Blockbuster Video. <laughs> they used to be a video chain. He works at Blockbuster Video in Des Moines, Iowa, and he decides to surprise his brother over in England, who paid for the ticket, who gave him the, the money. Meanwhile, he gets over there and he gets involved in um, an espionage plot that involves uh, Russia and uh, Great Britain to reignite the Cold War and to bring back war by planting a bomb in a Russian doll at at a, a meeting between the British diplomats and the Russian diplomats. To have a bomb explode in the middle of this meeting is, is what the, he walks into. But his, his brother is already hosting a business meeting at his house, and he doesn't want his brother Wally to mess up his business meeting. So he gets a ticket 
for Wally in what's called the theater of life. It's like improvisation uh, theater where you, you pay money, you go there, and then all the actors interact with you in a, like a, a spontaneous kind of a improvisation um, in which you're like in a spy movie. Except when he goes to the phone booth to receive the call for his first interaction in the theater of life, this, this game that his brother paid for, uh, this theater that his brother paid for as a gift, birthday gift, he actually gets a call from somebody who believes that he's part of this plot to uh, this espionage, this plot to start the car Cold War all over again. So the Holy Spirit and Jesus are showing this movie to show you that there is a state of mind that you can be in. If you remember this is a dream, if you remember this is a theater, no matter what seems to happen to you, if you remember it's just a theater, that you're just dreaming this, you can laugh, even at what the world calls the most dire consequences. Because in this movie, it seems like the characters around, <laughs> around uh, Bill Murray are trying to poison him. They're trying to shoot him, kill him. They're trying to attack him. They're trying to arrest him. They're trying to torture him. They, what the world would say, this would be him stepping into a nightmare. And yet, his perspective is that it's just a theater. His perspective, it's all just entertainment. His perspective is this is a gift that his brother has got him this kind of uh, interactive, uh, you know, gift, and he's going to enjoy himself in this play acting. So his personality is thinking, wow, this is so cool. My brother got me a gift and I get to play along with the whole thing. Now, why is that important? Is because when you start to follow the guidance of the Holy Spirit, you have to play along. You have to play along with the guidance. There's, the ego may be shocked at some of the instructions you get <laughs> from the Holy Spirit. And yet, you have to be willing to just listen and follow and to set aside your ego's objections and your ego's reactions. That's what faith is. It's the willingness to follow a guided plan that's, that's designed just for you. And all you have to do is be loyal to that guided plan. But the ego will try to sabotage that plan at every turn, try to tell you these are real concerns, these are real problems, these are re real issues. And I read to you, uh, for some of you that were with us yesterday, I read the first paragraph from Lesson 135 in, in my defenselessness. If I defend myself, I am attacked, was the name of it. And basically, Jesus says, this is the folly of illusions. First, you make the illusion real. Then you plan and, and take action to protect yourself, having first made the illusion real. So this is the human condition, is always reacting and responding to people, places, and situations as if they're real people, real places, real situations. Yet this movie will show you that if you have the right frame of mind, you can sail through anything with Jesus and the Holy Spirit because you're actually not in danger. Your spirit is eternal and your spirit is never in danger. But when you identify with the ego and the body, that's where the danger starts. That's where the illusions start. And that's where the mind gets into all these defense mechanisms health insurance, life insurance, medical insurance, uh, protecting the body in, in many different ways. It takes a lot of energy and it's all part of the folly of the ego. Now I told you that parable with Lisa and I because when I first called Lisa, she was, she was in a bit of distress about what was happening uh, with her son and 
and her best friend and her best friend's uh, son. And this miracle adventure that Jesus took Lisa and I on was a direct answer from Jesus to that stress, to that uh, conflict. He was just saying, no, no, turn your attention to me and I will lift you out of this perceived conflict. And in this movie, that's what's happening. We can see from the very beginning, Wally, he appreciates the gift that he has received from his brother in England. He decides to surprise his brother in England with a visit. And that's when the brother realizes, oh my God, I have a dinner meeting with important uh, companies and people from different countries in Europe. I can't have Wally messing up my business meeting. So he gives another gift. He says, let's take you to the theater of life, kind of to get him out of his hair, you know, get him away <laughs> from his wife and his business meeting. And that's when we get to experience the miracle of being taken care of, of being clueless, of being as our first one was being defenseless in every situation. Bill Murray is going to show us exactly how to do it. So enjoy the movie. I will come on and visit you uh, as we go along during the movie. You are going to have a good laugh. And this, you remember, you're laughing at the ego because the ego has no power to hold you back when you trust and follow the, the guidance and direction. And notice how Bill Murray's character doesn't always remember, but he quickly remembers his lesson of the day, we'll call it, his Course in Miracles lesson of the day, that this is a theater. This is not reality. This is a theater of a world. And we don't have to buy into the fear because the fear is not coming from the theater, it's just coming from the ego in our mind. So enjoy the movie. Happy Saturday. <laughs> Let's have a great day. <laughs> Love you.